Hi, my name's Emma, Emma Stevens, and this is my first ever video vlog. Um, I wanted to do this video because today in my yoga class, there was a really lovely woman who took an interest in my situation, um, my recovery from hypothalamic amenorrhea, or HA, as everybody's commonly abbreviating it to. Um, and she said to me, you know, what you've just said in two sentences really inspired me and, you know, I really think that you should make a video on this, you should, you should vlog it and, you know, speak out to other people who genuinely might be going through the same thing. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself um, and my current situation. I am 31 years old and I do have uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea or HA. Um, I've had this for eight, nine years. I was a runner. I say a runner, that's what everybody identifies themselves as because I did, I did the same. Um, I've always struggled with my weight. I've always struggled with my food. I was your typical I'm going to walk into the boots on the supermarket and I'm going to scan the shelves on my lunch break to see which calorie is the lowest on that particular sandwich. God forbid I picked up a chicken and avocado because the calories was 400 as opposed to the you know, tuna and light mayonnaise which was 250. It had to be the tuna mayonnaise even though I much would have preferred the chicken avocado. It's crazy the chicken avocado would still have been, you know, nutritional and good fats. And yet I chose the tuna mayo. I'm, you know, going into a different story now, but you get the point. I've always been somebody who has watched what they've eaten because I grew up with a family that, you know, they were feeders. My mum was a chef, you know, she loved feeding us. We had the biggest portions that you could ever, ever have imagined. And when I was growing up at home, everything was full fat this, which is not a problem, but it was when I was having it in huge amounts of food quantities. So when I was growing up, I was nine, 10 years old when I really started gaining a lot of weight and by the time I was year nine at school I was a size 20. I'm not too sure how much I weighed to be honest with you but that's by the by. So <clears throat> I wanted this to change you know I had skinny friends that could eat and eat and eat and I couldn't and I was striving to be thinner so you know, my mum, who's always pushed me to want to lose weight as well, struggled with her own weight. She bought me these slimming tablets and they were called Thermo Slimmers. And yeah, I, I, I lost a significant amount of weight. I'm not advocating that by the way, but I, I lost the weight, not from the pills, but because it changed my mindset into thinking, right, I really want to do this. The pills could have been a placebo. They could have been a paracetamol, they could have been anything, they could have been a vitamin B vitamin. Um, the point I'm trying to make is I barely ate. I ate a few grapes, a you know, pot noodle here and there. I did some swimming, I did a lot of walking, and I lost significant amounts of weight. Then we come to the age of 15. So I'm talking a good couple of years and I lost a lot of weight significant amounts. I'm now a healthy size 12, which was, you know, nice. And I met my husband. I was only 15 at the time. Um, and we had a bit of a roller coaster of emotions for them few years that we were on off dating. Um, it wasn't until I was 20, 21 that, you know, my husband moved in and we unexpectedly fell pregnant with our first child. Um, I carried full term, I didn't care what I ate, you, know, you name it, I had it, you know, chips and gravy for lunch, donuts, waffles, oh, just everything and anything. I would walk around the supermarket with a great big grab bag of, 
you know, onion ring crisps and just pay for the packet at the end. Um, I was huge. I gained four and a half stone. I carried to full term. And unfortunately, something had obviously gone wrong with my baby girl because Layla was born stillborn at full term. Um, obviously, we were both incompletely, you know, just devastated. Um, you know, for anybody that's gone through that, they'll tell you the same. It will either make you or break your relationship, and it made me and Simon stronger. You know, we we grieved a lot, and I hardly touched any morsel of food because, you know, I was just disgusted with myself. You know, I'd gained so much weight, and it was all for what? For for the you know, I couldn't even have a healthy child. You know, I blamed myself. Um, it was a really tough time. Um, me and Simon, six months later, we got married. Um, and I was, you know, still a bigger girl. You know, I was probably a size 12 to 14 at that time. Um, still trying to lose the weight um, in preparation to try and fall pregnant again, which I did not, not long after the wedding. Um, I had a healthy son who is an amazing person. Um, inside and out he's just unbelievable everybody who has my little boy is just incredibly amazed by his you know personality um, you know there was a reason what happened happened but I'm thankful for him um, and it wasn't long after JJ that because I had a normal birth you know I, I did quite quickly go back into doing a bit of exercise to lose some weight you know I remember getting the uh, the wee fit board, you know, and doing the wobble with the hula hoops. We've got videos of us all trying to get involved with that. I was really restricting my food as much as I possibly could in a really healthy way. And I was losing a healthy amount of weight uh, for my body size. Um, I would only do one intense session of exercise or what I would have called intense back then, which was just a, a Les Mills body pump at my local gym once a week. Uh, nothing major, maybe a bit of walking here and there, that was it. And then we decided to enter into a half marathon. Now I've never ran or run in my life, so this was a big thing for me. Um, I started running every day at lunchtime, just trying to fit in as many miles as I possibly could to try and build up that stamina. Um, you know, and I was getting really good at running naturally. I'd found something that I was really good at because growing up, I was too big to be, you know, in the gymnastics team. My mum told me I had to lose two stone at the age of eight to get into the gymnastics team and I just couldn't do it. So that's always been a big thing for me. I've never been good at anything um, other than music, which wasn't a sport. Um, so this for me, to be a natural runner and to be able to run faster, stronger than, than my husband, than my friends, this was, you know, crazy. This was something that, you know, I was born to do. I was born to run. And I kept running, kept running, kept running. And all of a sudden started seeing significant weight changes to the point where I'm thinking, you know, I can eat quite a lot of food at the moment. And yet yeah, I'm dropping dress sizes like... Like you wouldn't believe so this was just so you know encouraging for me the weight was coming down on the scales you know I did frequently weigh myself back then don't anymore and <clears throat> I loved it I didn't I didn't dread getting up in the morning and going for a run it was escapism it was it was good initially but it turned into something that I could punish myself with so the mornings of 5 a.m. come winter where no one wants to get out of bed. It's icy on the floor. It's dark. Um, I would be getting up and I would be pulling my very tired body out of the bed and I would go and run eight, nine, ten miles every day. And I would do this frequently, you know, for years and years and years how I didn't get more injured than what I, you know, the few little niggles that I did have is beyond me. I was eating, so I wasn't, you know, your typical anorexic who was starving themselves without, you know, applying any food into their mouths, but 
for what little I was eating to what I was currently burning, I was anorexic. And slowly but surely, I went from being five foot seven, um, I was seven stone 10 at my lightest. I was also incorporating muscle training into that. So I had a good, good muscle mass. Um, I was so lean, so lean, 7% body fat, ridiculous. Um, and it was really tough. Everybody was so worried about me. My heart rate slowed. Everything was just going terribly bad. Um, you know, everybody that would, friends of mine that would see me and give me a, a hug to say hello, could feel every bone. And I was dying. And it took a long time for me to get out of that. Um, and it was a slow progress of gaining weight. Um, I did start to increase my calories. Um, I enrolled in, or enrolled, I was sort of put forward by the doctors to an eating disorder clinic where I would speak out about my issues, um, my routines, my OCD behavior, my perfectionism, to the point where I had slowly gained, not a lot, but enough to keep my heart rate a little bit higher at rest. It was down to its lowest, was 37 at rest. Um, and that wasn't because of how fit I was, that was because my heart was starting to slow down. Um, I was slowly killing myself. Now, <clears throat> I didn't know at the time that I had anything wrong with my periods because I was on the marina coil, which I had, you know, went on by choice after I'd had JJ and I'd been on this for, got three and a half years. And it was only when I turned 24 to 25 that we decided that we would have another baby and I had the coil removed. And, you know, initially I did get a few sort of signs that my period was coming. Um, you know, I would get the normal sort of emotions, um, too much information, but maybe a bit of cervical mucus was, you know, apparent, which whilst I was on the marina coil or had the marina coil, you know, I didn't have anything. Um, I didn't bleed for the entire three and a half years that I was on it, not even a little bit. Um, when the coil was removed, I was really hopeful that it wasn't going to be long before my cycle returned. We had no issues falling pregnant with Layla nor falling pregnant with my son JJ. So I didn't get a period and the mumps had gone past. This was six months into it, still no period. So I did go to the doctors and I did say, look, this is the situation. And they scratched their heads and they said, well, you know, you've been on the marina coil for a while. You know, maybe it's just post coil and the Maria. So I'm thinking, I don't even know what that sentence meant, but you know, we'll give it a little bit longer. Um, no look at my weight, my eating habits, um, or any blood work was done then. So another six months had passed. This is a year without, you know, any coil or any period. And I went back to the doctor and I said, listen, I'm still not having a period. So we need to do some investigation. And they did, they sent my blood work. Um, I had estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, everything tested. Um, you know, they went as far as, you know, MRI scans, um, you know, sort of checking the pituitary gland that there wasn't a tumor that was benign. They, you know, sent me to the, endro they referred me to the endocrinology department. I can't even say that. Um, and after a lot of tests and a lot of investigations, it was determined that, you know, everyone's telling me I'm, I'm in, you know, early menopause. You know, I'm, I'm never going to have a period again, so you need to take HRT, which I did. I took estrogen for, you know, a good year and I did gain a little bit of weight and I, you know, my mood was shifted. It was better. I was happier but I was still excessively exercising. And now we're talking, I was still running, mixed in with, on the days I didn't run, I would go and do a spin class, then I would do, I don't know, a 15 minute hit class straight after spin, because the spin was only 45 minutes. Then that evening, I would go and do an attack class, um, a body pump class, 
Then the next day, if I did manage to do a run, I would still incorporate another class, maybe body combat. I loved all the classes. Um, wasn't so much into weight training like I eventually got into then, but still excessively doing two, three things back to back every day, seven days a week, no rest, um, while still not fueling my body properly, not getting a period, um, having all these tests done. My blood work did come back and of course it was in indicative of no estrogen, no progesterone, very little FSH, no LH, no testosterone. Um, the only thing that was fairly reasonable was my DHEA, which was my adrenals, which, you know, it, you know, I don't know why, but there you go, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. So I'm at the age of 26 now. I've been a year without a period. We've investigated, they've thrown me on estrogen. Um, I quite comfortably went through the estrogen process, but the little weight that I had gained, I was determined to get back off again. So I stopped the HRT and I went back on to heavily restricting, more running, cut the spin out, cut this out, just go straight back to running again. And again, of course, I lost all the weight because running seems to do something for me. Um, we're now at 27, 27 and a half, and I'm thinking, what, what am I doing? You know, I just don't want to do this anymore. Um, I'm waking up miserable. You know, every single day I'm, you know, so depressed. So, some days I thought, I just don't want to be here anymore. I've got a beautiful husband, a beautiful son, a lovely family, a really good job. You know, what on earth have I got to be sad about? But I was. You know, I had massive, massive body issues. This progressed for another year two until the age of sort of 29 where I thought okay I'm ready to put some weight on I'm ready to try and get my period back naturally and I tried half assed it as they say and I hardly touched my exercise habits all I did was started eating a bit more and I still restricted my food in this process I tried vegan diets cleansing diets juice diets everything you can think of um, I decided just to eat normally and I gained a little bit of weight but not a significant amount. Um, it was only when I started reducing the running and really got into heavy weight training that I saw my body composition change for the better but I had a better frame, I wasn't stick thin, I was gaining more lean body mass in a curvier manner probably for the exercises that I was doing. And I've done that for the past year, year and a half. And it's only in the last three, just over three weeks that I have gone, as they say, all in. And I have stopped my exercise. I, I'll give you an example of what my typical week was. So on a Monday, I would get up, I would run eight miles. I was still running, by the way. On my lunch break, I would do an hour to an hour 15 of heavy, heavy back-to-back -back wake sessions, finished with sprints. In my wake sessions, I had very little rest time between sets. You know, if I was standing around doing nothing, then I wasn't burning. So I was constantly skipping for two minutes in between my deadlifts, jump lunging, anything that I could possibly get in that could burn the most amount. I was eating probably between 16 to 1800 calories a day, which for somebody of my muscle tone wasn't enough whatsoever. I was then coming home, um, working a full day, cleaning my house from top to bottom because I'm an OCD cleaner. I would walk the dog for an hour in the evening in the woods. Um, you know, I would still not sit still when I'm resting. I would fidget, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Everything was burning more calories and it was getting beyond a joke. So I said to myself, what am I gonna do about this? You know, I, I've been told constantly that what I've got isn't gonna be reversed. I had no doctors nor, nor consultants saying to me that you can do anything about it. All you've got to do is stop your exercise and try and, you know, sort your diet. And of course, 
everybody was just saying to me, but you're, you, you know, you're, you're in menopause. That's it, you're early menopause. You know, you're done, that's it. And so I'd completely dismissed the fact of having another child or even attempting to get my period back. I had no idea of the dangers that not having a menstrual cycle monthly was doing to my body, my bone density, even just my mental health as well. Um, you know, your, your fingers, your nails, your hair, your body temperature. I was constantly cold, always cold. All right, maybe didn't feel the cold as much when I'd gained a little bit of weight and stopped running as much, but still very moody. I mean, I was probably a new person without, you know, the old Emma that once was, who was funny and, you know, didn't even need a drink to be a laugh, needed to have a bottle of wine just to relax. Um, and even then, if I'd have a bottle of wine, maybe once in a while, if I went on a, a night out, a binge drinking session, whatever, you know, I wouldn't eat because I've had a bottle of wine. You know, that was enough calories, that was my dinner. So what I've put my body through, I'm gutted about. And now at 31 years old, I had recently, you know, sort of been investigating hypothalamic anemia. Um, which is, if you didn't know, where your hypothalamus has shut down in your brain. It's not telling your body to produce the sex hormones anymore because like a bear going into a cave for winter, hibernating, where there's no food, your body conserves the energy that it's got. You know, that bear isn't going to be eating for however many months. So the body will only use what it needs to use to survive that time. It will shut down you know, the areas of the body that it doesn't need. And my hypothalamus was, you know, shut down my sex hormones for all these years, but I needed to wake it up. I just didn't know that there was other people that had gone through the same thing and, and actually recovered from this. I was listening to a podcast randomly, which I never do, and I was on YouTube. I found some people that, you know, I think it was This Is Mia or What Mia Did Next was one that I found you know, different stories of different young girls that have really gone into their fitness and training excessively, restricting a lot of them anorexic, um, or have come from a real heavy disordered eating way and habits, and they've all lost their periods. Some of them don't even know it because they're on, you know, the, the coil or birth control pills, so they don't know that they're not having a period. They're just going along like I was, thinking that, Oh, you know, it's great. As long as my body looks good, you know, I must be healthy. So what? I'm not having a period. That's not what you have when you're on, you know, the marina coil anyway. Lots of people don't have any bleeds on the marina coil. I just didn't realise that the reason I wasn't having a bleed was because I wasn't producing enough. My body wasn't healthy. I was a vision of health to look at, or sort of, especially when I started weight training, not so much when I was running and heavily restricting. I looked ill. But I was a vision of health when I was weight training, but still inside I'm not healthy. I'm now three weeks into my recovery. Um, I even went out for dinner last night and for the first time I'd say in a very long time, probably since I was a young girl, you know, I shared a dessert with my husband and didn't wobble. I call it a wobbly. You know, I had a wobble. I could eat a pack of nuts you know, mixed nuts, but because of the calories in them, I would have a wobble. And I always have a wobble. If there's a food that I haven't allowed myself to actually have within my daily quota, then I'd have a wobble. You know, I would be in tears. Sometimes I'd throw up. You know, all these crazy things would go on. So I needed to do something. There's, there's definitely a long journey ahead, and if you want to continue listening to my developments, then I'm going to be trying to reach out to those that maybe are in the same situation. If they've got a disordered way of eating, they might not have an eating disorder, but they're restricting carbs, or they're restricting fats, or they're restricting how many calories that they consume in a day because they're wearing a tracker, and it says, well, I've burned 1,800 calories today, so I can't eat any more than... 1300 because if I want to lose a pound a week then I've got to reduce it by 500. It's all bollocks. The whole system is a load of bollocks 
And if anybody is in that situation where they're looking and they're tracking and they feel like shit every day, then I'm hoping that this and my situation can help them. I found a book, I, which I read before I went on holiday, called uh, No Period, Now What? by Nicola uh, Rinaldi, who didn't have any kind of disordered way of eating. She simply went on a diet, but she was heavily exercising. She lost her period. She's created this book for people that want to have babies, but to be honest with you, even if you don't want to have children, even if you're just thinking, could I have this? Read the book. It helped me and my mindset on eating more, incorporating more fat in my diet, which I never ever ate whatsoever. Um, coming away from restriction and trying to accept the fact that I'm gonna have to gain what my body wants me to gain because everybody has a set point. Everybody has a set estrogen point where your body will start to kick in and give you a menstrual cycle. Everybody has a set weight that they have a range that they should be. And if you go above, beyond that, below that, then the body's not happy, the body's not healthy. And at the moment, if you're experiencing where you're restricting your calories, even if it's in the past you've restricted your calories, if you're excessively exercising and putting stress on the body constantly and under fueling that, then you are at risk of developing HA, or if not, you've not had a period, then you could well have it. Um, and it is reversible. There are so many women, it doesn't matter whether you've had it for two, three, four, or in my case, eight, nine years, it can take six weeks and people can get it back, which I am praying for. Um, it's been three weeks and two days since I stopped all intense exercise. I walk the dog once a day, first thing in the morning because I'm used to getting up early um, and I do hot yoga once a day. Um, hot yoga was something I was doing anyway with my weights and with my running and with walking the dog. Um, I would do four or five sessions of exercise a day. So cutting the running, cutting the weight training, cutting the HIIT training, um, any combat, any classes, anything, everything's gone. It's just walking and yoga. That might not still be enough. I might in another month's time have to stop doing the hot yoga, which I love. Um, so I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you informed of what's going on. If anybody's got any questions and they want to put it in the comment section, you know, I'm quite happy to answer anybody's questions. I've skimmed off certain subjects within this is just to give you a basic outline of my story, a bit long winded version, sorry. Um, but I think I've covered everything that I feel that people who particularly might have very similar situations to me, if you're a perfectionist, if you always want to aim to be the highest, the best, um, you know, everything's got to be perfect. You know, if I'm going to estimate a calorie content of a food, I'm always going to overestimate because God forbid that I go over my daily quota, that's just not allowed. If you're that kind of person, you know, try and reach out, try and talk about it because I never did. And I went on for years and years believing the doctors, believing the consultants that I'm, you know, menopause, that I haven't got anything left in me for it to come out and, you know, that's basically it. And actually that's not true and I'm trying to do something about it. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave, or whatever it is, a thumbs up and subscribe, um, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.